Now the idea of having egg laying chickens for your homestead or prepper home is a great one if you can do it. Having access to eggs on a daily basis to supplement your diet is a very desirable idea. So if you decide to get egg laying hens, there are many things to consider if you want to take good care of your girls and keep them happy and healthy. The better things are for them, the better things will be for you. Before I even get started, make sure you know what the laws and regulations are where you live. Unfortunately, it is a sad reality that many cities and counties have rules about chickens, basically so that they can sell you a permit. I experienced this in Cook County, Illinois a few years back when they made it illegal to own a chicken, then made a regulation to sell permits to own a chicken. Basically, they made up a law to take away people's rights to own chickens, invented a regulation to turn it into a privilege, and then sold it back to the people. So do know what your local laws are. The most obvious thing we need to discuss here is diet. Keep in mind that different breeds may need slight variations, but you can begin with starter feed until they are about 8 weeks old, then switch to grower feed until they are about 20 weeks old. After the chicken is between, say, 18 to 24 weeks old, depending upon breed, it is ready to start producing eggs. So this is when you need to start concentrating more on the diet. Firstly, consider the hen's protein levels. Egg layers don't need as much protein as meat hens. In fact, the optimal protein level for egg layers is right around 15 to 19 percent. Anything more than that is the type of diet you would feed to them if you intended to eat them. So if you're using feed instead of letting the hens free range, make sure you're using the right feed that is formulated for laying hens. And if you are using feed, make sure your hens have enough. They will typically average around 4 ounces per day. Feed them all at once early in the morning. Double check your feed levels to make sure they are getting enough. Also consider calcium. If you want the eggs to come out clean and not have a high risk of breaking or fracturing, make sure there is enough calcium mixed with the feed. Usually about 3% of their feed. You can add any type of calcium you like such as limestone, oyster shells, calcium that's already in layer type feed, and even the chicken's own eggshells. However, make sure that you grind the eggshells up into a powder. Chickens have been known to cannibalize eggs, and sometimes this can be caused by the chicken recognizing that they're eating shells. Your girls will also be needing grit, basically tiny stones and sand. Chickens are birds, obviously, so no teeth, they used gizzards, which means they need the grit to grind their food for digestion. Keep a bowl of grit available where your hens can get to it. And keep a bowl of fresh water available for your hens. I would rotate the water daily and keep that bowl clean. Your hens can also eat table scraps. After all, birds are scavengers. But try not to give them too much at once. Depending upon what you're feeding them, it could also make them fat which would affect egg production. And there are certain foods you should avoid completely as they could be toxic to your chickens. These would be chocolate, tomatoes, avocados, citrus fruits, rhubarb, apple seeds, onions, eggplants, or anything with caffeine or alcohol. If you are not able to let your girls free roam, give them mealworms from time to time, like maybe once or twice a week at the most, Think of it as a treat. Very important, always keep the coop clean. Birds that are cooped up can get sick, and sick birds are dead birds. Clean out the coop once a week and give it a good scrubbing at least once a month. Personally, I prefer to do it more often than that, but that would be the minimum. Use a solution that won't harm the birds, like diluted white vinegar, and think PPEs when you go into the coop. And speaking of sanitary conditions, don't overcrowd your coop. Every chicken needs at least four feet of space. In fact, if you're not able to let your chickens free roam, 10 feet of space would be recommended. Someone should tell that to Purdue and Tyson. If you're having difficulty with your hens depositing eggs in the right place, put a decoy egg in their nest. This usually helps them take the hint. 
Now, hopefully you are in a position to allow your chickens to free roam. This is not only the most healthy option for your girls, but it allows them to do most of the diet math for themselves. They will find all the bugs and grit and seeds and anything else they desire all on their own. And yes, they will return to the coop every evening where you can lock them in to keep them safe from predators. Keep in mind, if you have a chicken that is used to being locked in a coop, that you may need to lead them back to the coop a couple of times for them to get the message, but they will figure it out. Also consider the fact that free range hens tend to live much longer than hens that are caged all of the time. Expect a healthy hen to live at least five to seven years on the average, depending upon the breed, and also expect a steady decline of around, say, 10% a year in egg production as the hen gets older. I will also be doing a follow-up on this video discussing the best egg producers, so please do watch out for that if you are considering raising egg-laying hens. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have anything you would like to add, please feel free to post it in the comment section down below. It could be very useful to some of those would-be farmers out there. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. Share it if you can and subscribe if you are new. Remember to hit the little bell icon so you can be notified of new content as it comes out and check out some of the other videos if you get the chance. I sure would appreciate it. Now that being said, as always, stay frosty folks and thanks for watching.